Welcome to another episode of Seeds of Music. I'm your host, Kyle Williams, and this is the only awesome web show where aspiring musicians can learn right now how to find their market and effectively grow as an independent artist or producer. Even if you don't consider yourself a serious musician in these interviews, you're going to learn a lot of great tips that will help you to enjoy your hobby even more, and you can apply these lessons in any, situ- situ- bleh, any situation, any vocation, no matter what you do, to reach your goals and do what you love every day. Today on the show, we have Chelsea Cohen, the creator of Artists Underground. Artists Underground, you know, what is Artists Underground exactly? It's, it's an organization that connects artists of all talents in the spirit of collaboration and cross-promotion, inspiring creativity and action by providing knowledge, resources, and outlets for achieving one's artistic goals. That is straight pulled from their site. So it she put it in better words than, than I could because I'd probably fudge it all up. But um, anyways, so what, what we're going to go over, some key things is, you know, why exactly is it important for artists of all disciplines, including musicians, uh, to collaborate and cross-promote each other? Um, also, the you know the music game is changing. The the landscape of being a musician and promoting yourself is changing with the times. You know, like back in the sixties and seventies, promotion and how you create went about creating music was a lot different because of like technology. So we're going to talk about why that game is changing and why we all, as musicians, artists, or creatives, need to understand that in order to succeed. Uh, we'll also tackle this this question of talent, you know, and what that exactly uh, means and how you can develop it. You know, are you born with it? I know this is something that's on a lot of people's minds, and maybe for some people it's not on their mind at all. Uh, and in the in the last saying, one of the big things we're going to talk to towards the end is what is the best best method to promote uh, yourself as an artist? I mean, do you do it all by yourself, or do you? have someone else do it uh so uh we're gonna pick her brain a little bit on how she approaches that and what she does to uh to promote artists underground and all the artists that um either submit artwork or perform for that so let's get into it all right guys welcome to another episode of seeds of music i have here chelsea cohen with artists underground yes awesome organization that's connecting artists of all talents in the spirit of collaboration and cross promotion, I've actually pulled that from her Facebook page. That was not <laughs> paraphrased at all. Um, so, Chelsea, thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. So, tell us what is Artist Underground? Um, Artist Underground. Well, Artist Underground is kind of in the works and in transition right now. Um, when I started Artist Underground, it was kind of in the spirit of I did not have connection with that many artists and I was kind of realizing I was I was making a transition from into writing from film and so I had a lot of uh, community and a lot of experience with um, feeling that community element um, and connection with people in the film industry but then kind of breaking out into um, into writing and into other artistic media um, I didn't really have, you know, there were, there there seemed to be all of these different, you know, subsets and it seemed like that there were little conversations going, going on everywhere, but there was no cohesion within the groups, you know, film was different from, from, you know, photography was different from music was different from, from writing and it just seemed to me that bringing that all together and having one conversation seemed to make a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. And um, every time I spoke to people, um, they were looking for that type of a group. They were looking for some sort of support and connection where they could go and they could talk to people about what they were doing. It was kind of like, we're all in this together, but all alone. And so I, I was, I kind of, I'm the kind of person where I find the one person at a party, just a regular cocktail party, and who is into art in some way, and just start kind of going on what, you know, what Artist Underground is about, and they really kind of take to it. And the more I was talking, before I started Artist Underground, the more I was talking to people about this idea of community and of coming together, and hey, aren't we all in it? 
you know, aren't we all experiencing the same things? And everyone would just kind of ignite on that. And it would just really, there was a lot of passion behind this idea that, yeah, we're all in it. We're all doing the same thing. And especially in film, there's a lot of PR. There's a lot of like, oh, yeah, this is what I'm doing. And that's what I'm doing. And everyone thinks everyone else is, is you know, doing so much better than them. You know, they're doing so much stuff, you know, so much yeah. is going on. Well, and they're and they're talking and they're talking a lot about a lot of things that are almost happening. You know, there's like this is this is you know underway in, that, in the film industry. There's a lot of like you know, oh, and I'm working on this project and I'm working on that project and and working might mean like you're thinking about it. You know, in in that. So I found like in that industry, um, we were all feeling bad about ourselves because we were kind of trying to impress each other with aspirations and I just and that was kind of when the idea started I was talking to this guy and he was saying oh yeah this and that but you know it's kind of tough right now because and he started talking and I was like isn't it funny how we are all doing the same thing and we are not willing to talk about it we're not willing to support each other and talk about yeah the journey we're trying to be something other than we are and pretend that we skipped that journey yeah. that everyone else is going trying on. Trying to be and here no one... when you might be still like here, you know. Exactly. Trying to get there. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, and then the minute that you come down to where you, you know, what the journey really is, people connect with you. And then they feel like, "Hey, that person that I really respect is going through the <laughs> same stuff that I'm going through." And it makes the artist much more powerful to know that there is that journey, that there isn't just, you know, that, and that they're going through it. They can feel good about not being exactly where they want to be because they know that everyone else is, is on the same path. And so it becomes um, a group of people that are moving together rather than people that are moving separately, trying to, you know, trick each other into believing that they're somewhere that they're not. and yeah kind of downplaying the journey because the journey is a really important part of you know being an artist it's like and for some people i think the journey is it you know the journey mm -hmm. the present moment the the process of creating whatever you're painting or if you're playing guitar or you're playing trumpet or or whatever you do you know dancing like it's in that process of of creation that's where actually yeah, it is. You know, it is right there, and I think too many people are embarrassed, like by their current situations, because hey, like it doesn't necessarily feel good to be like struggling to pay your bills or struggling to come up with ideas and feeling like all your ideas are flat and non-interesting. Mm -hmm. But um, but everybody goes through that, so it's there's no reason to be embarrassed about it because I'm pretty sure that if you talk to any successful artist or musician you know who you know has like a stellar career behind them I mean they're probably not really embarrassed to talk about those times when they just felt like they sucked and they, and yeah. they felt like they had to put up this facade like I am I've, I'm doing much more I'm not struggling uh, don't perceive me that way but we got to kind of open up ourselves as being flawed as as being struggling in order to help each other out yeah and you know it's funny because i think of the summer the song summer of 69 you know and he sings those are the best <laughs> those are the best years of my life and when you think about it and you look back i don't think about that song that much no. i try not to but no i get what you're saying <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> um but you know it's funny because uh, you talk about you know the journey being i actually have um a something in my living room hanging up that it says the journey is everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, you know, kind of what you were saying is if you are, be if you become embarrassed about your journey, that hinders your creativity yeah. completely. Cause all you're doing is you're, um, you're, you're thinking of your struggle and you're not embracing it and seeing it as a beautiful thing, which I think lends to, it lends a lot to my creativity is looking at, you know, looking at where I am at in life and, I've, you know, I've written a lot of, of poetry and stuff around the idea of the journey and the struggle and, you know, um, uh, life in general and how, you know, how great it is that we just, you know, continue to persist. Persistence is beautiful. 
But if you are kind of in an environment as an artist where you're made to think that that what you're doing is is subpar, it's it's going to keep you from creating because you're always looking at the negatives, you know. And and I think that that's that's a big part of um, that's a big part of of what we need to support in artists. Yeah, because creativity is a positive action. So, it, yeah. and, and negatives, any kind of negative is going to oppose that. That's why, mm. I mean, have you ever uh, run across anyone who was just constantly saying negative things and they just didn't do anything, you know? You yeah. Know, had talent. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's funny because I, I actually had to, you know, in terms of the, the journey is everything, when I bought that little kind of placard, I had to, I, I, when I was in the film industry, and you know, I started out really positive, but um, I got very jaded. And I've seen other people in, in the industry get jaded. Um, and and the creativity kind of, it becomes business, and the creativity kind of like uh, leeches out of you. They become you know? the monster. They yes. become Darth Vader. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so... I actually had to consciously, you know, I, I went out and I bought that and I had to consciously change my mindset. Um, I left that industry yeah. and, um, and, and that was kind of the, the whole thing is, is that I saw that, that that can happen. And if you don't surround yourself with people who are constantly, you know, embracing creativity and, you know, and, and you're just constantly surrounded with this negative, like, um, I guess this negative group of people, you're not going to succeed, and that's yeah. kind of what what happens, you know. Because their mentality is kind of the antithesis to success. I mean, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, like, maybe it becomes important then to like really look or look about the closest circle of people. You know, five people that you have that you're yes. constantly around, and think about kind of trimming that back, you know, or replacing them with people who aspire you to reach the goals that you want. Um, yes, that's very key. That actually, I, I completely have changed my, my group of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see any of the people that I used to see anymore. And it's funny how, you know, the minute that you make that decision to change, it automatically happens. You com you become, <clears throat> you, you stop wanting to hang out with those people and mm -hmm. you start gravitating towards the people that mm -hmm. support, you know, your creativity and your goals. So let's, uh, Let's go back to artists. Uh, why is it exactly uh -huh. important for artists of all disciplines, including musicians, to collaborate and cross promote? I mean, what's the big deal? Why is that so important? Um, I believe it's important because, in terms of the creativity aspect, there are, we're in as artists. We're you know we may practice in one field, but we are inspired by many different fields, especially things that we you know don't hone you know, hone the skills in or things that um, we might, you know, maybe we dabble in, but we don't find that that's our, that going to be our, our professional path. Yeah. Um, it's when, when you take in other forms of art, I think that it opens up different parts of your mind and different ways of thinking oh, that, okay. that you don't necessarily um, think of. For example, um, when I, I read, I read, um, a lot, <laughs> but I read uh, a, a, a novelist called Susan Vreeland, and she writes historical fiction about painters, and it completely changed my viewpoint on um, on how to tell a story. It was very interesting because I never considered in painting that painting is one image. You know, having a film background, I always dealt with images. Yeah. And they have to tell a story in a single image. Yeah. Like um, Judith slays Halfrenius. You know, that's it. Is that where she's like, yeah, holding his head like this? Exactly. Yeah. And I then, remember that one. It's pretty and hardcore. her maid, yeah. So <laughs> she. So there was a, a story called um, "The Passion of uh, Artemisia," and this this uh, artist, Artemisia Gentileschi, she was the she was the most famous woman um, painter of her time she painted this image and she actually had a history of of abuse uh, of abuse by a male and so she brought 
to that piece something that no man could have brought. Mm -hmm. But it, it's the moment, to me it was, it's the moment that she chose, it's the moment that the artist chooses to show because there are so many different portions of that. You know, there's, there's an image of her sneaking the head out in the basket with the maid, you know, but she chose the actual image, the cutting of the neck. She chose the anger. Yeah. And so to me, um, as a writer, I found that very interesting to have that perspective of looking at another art form and seeing how they have to tell a story in a different way and their mind works differently, you know? I, I find it very interesting. I think that it's really important as artists that we take in other mm -hmm. art forms because all artists are creative, but their minds, different people choose different fields because their minds work differently, <clears throat> you know? And I think that it's very fascinating to really consider that, you know, that portion of, of the creative arts and how um, it gets us to think differently when we, when we um, kind of, we, we expose ourselves to more art and then to bring all of those minds that are all creative yet think in different ways to bring those together in a, in a collaboration has created some really amazing things that we have seen um, recently I mean uh, I don't know if you've seen the documentary or not the documentary the, uh, the film Howl um, it's starring James Franco. It tells no. the story of um, Allen Ginsberg's Howl. Um, it it tells the story of the the obscenity trials, but it also takes his poem and puts it into a into a short film. And and there's animation that's in, that's involved and encompassed in this. And so that's cross collaboration, kind of at its finest. You take a piece of poetry and something that most people would not ever have picked up the book Howl and read that poem. It's a long poem, you know, and um, there, it's very complex and it has a lot of things that it says, but to take it and put it in filmic form and combine film and animation and um, narration and acting and music with this poem, this is a poem that has now been able to reach a much wider audience and open mind and deliver the message that he delivered, you know, yeah. way back then, bring it to another another um, <clears throat> audience and another generation. Yeah. So and, it, yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so uh, um, I just wanted to, yeah, I, I just had this jump into my head. It's like this this idea that there's there's universal themes. There's un mm -hmm. there's these ideas that are that are just floating out there, you know, and people, anybody can hear them, but everybody has a different way of absorbing information, a different way of hearing something, you know. Some people yeah. like to, you know, come on a web show and listen to people talk. Some people like mm -hmm. to read it in a vlog. Some people like to hear it in a song through melody or rhythm, and some people like to feel it so they, you know, they dance it out or whatever. <laughs> I'm not doing that, yeah. but that's all uh -huh. I can do. Um, yeah. So it's just, you know, finding the right method to speak to people. So if there was an ancient poem from, you know, 2000 or how many long years ago, yeah. uh, it makes sense to, you know, put it into song or put it into a painting so that that universe, that, that timeless thing about it, that timeless message or narrative can be spread to a wider audience. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I think that's a really key, awesome thing about that. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, as far as like promote, as far as promotion, I know promotion. Mm -hmm. We're talking about cross promotion with art yes. artists underground. You know, the game is definitely changing now. I I think for for all artists, you know, and, and musicians, performers, because of technology. You know, we have the yeah. internet. We have uh, Twitter. We have all these so ways to socially connect. Uh, so the game is definitely changing i mean I, I mean how do you perceive this changing for the modern artist or performer like what what do you uh what do does this what do people need to look out for um it's very interesting because it's it on the one hand there is it's so much easier to get your work out there you know and um 
on the other hand, because it's so much easier, it's so much harder. Because the because we are now flooded. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're flooded with with people who didn't spend enough time uh -huh. on on their craft and developing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually I actually read an article about that. It's just that the tools have made the market flood with you know a lot of stuff, but. Yeah. Some of it's, you know, mediocre. How do you how do you think that what's the best way to tackle that issue? I mean, besides some besides like, oh, just get better, you know, how? How what's some sp mm -hmm. specific steps that a person could take? Um, I mean, I think there are a couple of things you need to you need to be very be smarter now. It's it's now it's not just a thing of, okay, I put myself my stuff out there. You need to find a market. You need to find others who like the types of work that you do okay. so maybe um maybe if you have say a specific style you know mm -hmm. as a writer or as a um musician you know whatnot you have a specific style you find those groups you know say say you know you you play a certain type of music you go on mm -hmm. to websites or um facebook groups or or whatnot that like that type of music and that's where you promote you okay. don't just blast the internet saying you know world i'm here now yeah. you know yeah to, uh, tip your cap like, you know <laughs> yeah the other thing that i see um that i think is a little bit of a waste of time i mean i i'm not completely a professional i know that people are all about you know getting the you know infinite numbers of likes you know um okay. and for me, I don't promote my like I have I have a, a writing page, and I don't promote my, you know I try to get likes, but I try to get like genuine likes, you know because it, it's okay, it's um, you know I I don't say oh like my page because you know then then it'll be good for me, you mm -hmm. know it's like my it's like here's my stuff if you like my page please you know feel free to like me that would be great. You know, yeah. um, that's me personally. I don't know if it's just just my own personality, but I'm looking for, you know, the people that will actually, when I release something, will actually turn into dollars because, you okay. know, or will actually get behind me and promote me. Yeah. You know, so um, quality traffic, quality yeah. fans, like people who are actual followers, not just like passers by or like, oh yeah, that was cool, and will never communicate with you in the future. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. So that is working. That's what you're talking about earlier. Working, just being smarter. You have to, you have to have some. Don't you think you have to have some kind of marketing savvy nowadays? Like if you want to be yes. successful. Yeah, and that's and that's one of the big things that I'm that I'm learning. You know, I listen to a lot of writing podcasts and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's it's been said as an artist, you're no longer just an artist. And that's why social media it is very important. And the number of likes is important um, from the perspective of that that's one of the things that um, that people who are going to sign you look for sometimes, mm -hmm. agents and, and um, publishers and things like that. They're going to yeah. look for that. So I guess, you know, it might not be, I mean, for me, myself, I want genuine likes, but I might be shooting myself in the foot. You know, it just depends on um, what... You know the industry is moving toward in a way that they're they're looking for buying a market. Also, yeah. that's a big change. Like before, it was just here's my talent. I wrote this book. You buy this book. Um, you know, and they they buy you know they buy you on you and they buy you on your book. Now they want to know, do you have a market? Yeah. And I've actually I was talking to my brother, you know, who's an actor and a dancer. And he told me of an instance where he heard a, fr a friend of his was up for a role, um, this female actress, and mm -hmm. it was her. It was against her and some other girl, and the thing that that um, happened was that the, they looked at. It was so close that they looked at the number of followers that, <laughs> that, that yeah. they have, you know, and they're yeah. buying the market, you know, as well. So that's that's an element that people have to consider. You know, you have as much talent as you have, but they're relying on you nowadays to do a lot of the marketing yourself. So, for 
for artists to to think, oh, I only do my art, you know, and they don't look at the business aspect of it. Yeah. I think that's really shooting yourself in the foot because, you know, you have to market yourself. They, they There's not a lot of money. They're not putting a lot of money into marketing anymore. Okay. So, like, um, it wouldn't it'd be... It seems like it would be different if you took a, a, any successful artist from the past, maybe the 60s or 70s, and just plop them, like, you know, in their beginnings, like in their early mm -hmm. 20s or whatever they, whenever they started, and plop them now. It's It's kind of like difficult it's kind of like difficult to imagine what would happen you know would they be able to get that you know f business force that marketing force like the agents managers all to get behind them in this different kind of climate so actually um i have a i have another question it's more specific about uh what you're talking about because you were saying pro you know promoting yourself as an artist yeah you know, is it better as an artist to promote yourself or get someone else to only do it or is it a combination of the both i'm guessing yeah both, maybe? I, okay <laughs> yeah i think it's a combination of both i mean um like an artist is always going to promote themselves you know and we kind of know that and we're used to that you know and we're almost over used to that as an audience sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed i don't know if i can can i hear you are you can you speak because i don't know if you cut out no, Sorry. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we'll keep that. I won't bother editing that. Okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's kind of fun. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it got really quiet all of yeah. a sudden. Maybe you were very, very intense. Yeah. Um, yeah, because an artist can will promote themselves, and sometimes we get over, you know, an artist will over-promote themselves. We're like, yeah, you got another show. That's great, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, and, you know, an artist, girlfriends and family and stuff, they'll promote themselves, but... When other people start promoting them, you know, fans and things like that, yeah. that's where it really, I think, gains traction and credibility for people. You know, it's it's not just, it's kind of like when you're an artist and your family loves what you do, you know, you can't really rely on them to be a good, to tell yeah. you, you know, give you good critiques and things yeah. like that. Yeah. It's similar like when we when we're as an audience, or as potential fans of someone's work, um, when we're being kind of solicited by the artist or by friends and family and yeah. you know girlfriends and boyfriends of the artist, it doesn't have as much credibility. Yeah. Um, Can you buy my son's album? Or, yeah, yeah sure. exactly. So, <laughs> so I think as important as it is to promote yourself because you will be the one that cares the most and you will you know have the furthest reach. And also when it gets to a point where you have fans to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with your fans um, means a lot you know and I see there are, a lot, there are some bands that are really you know good at having a direct you know relationship and conversation via social media with their fans and that I think earns them more loyalty so on the yeah. one hand there is there's that but on the other hand in terms of the credibility it's when other people are promoting fans and things like that and then you know when you get um, I guess when you get industries and groups and you know organizations promoting um, that even lends you know another I guess another leg to the to the whole structure of promotion yeah yeah that's it that seems like a multi-layered you know approach to that and just something mm -hmm. that makes that makes more sense you definitely need people who aren't um, you know, very close to you, who don't actually might not know you personally, so they're just looking at you through the lens of your art or your music, you know, and how yeah. it touches them, how it affects them, and they're placing the value on it. So that's like a yeah, good way to gauge it. Yeah, and another thing um, in terms of kind of what Artists Underground does, and you know, and uh, Sweet Noise, you know, I work I work with Jason on on Sweet Noise. And um, and just you know the whole soapbox session thing. I know that you talked to him um, yeah, yeah. the other day. Um, one of the things that I think that shows like that do is that they people begin to trust their um, their tastes, and they trust that they're going to to bring quality. So when an artist can align themselves with a group that already has a track record. Yeah. Of putting out good entertainment and putting out um, good art and promoting good yeah. artists. Yeah. Then you, as the artist, gain all of that 
all of that um, clout reputation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and so so those are that's one of the really good things to do is try to align yourself with um, a known entity that mm-hmm. has a following, and that's all in in terms of cross promotion. Yeah. You know, w- with artists underground, with soapbox, um, with sweet noise. There's there's that um, there's that track record, you know, of, yeah. of delivering good products, and so the minute that you you know try try to find those groups and try to get into those shows, you know, yeah. it's not just you putting on your own shows. Try to get into those shows because not only do you have all of the other artists who are involved promoting for you, and that's where the the glory of cross promotion comes in with these collaborative shows. You know, we have fine artists, we have craft crafts people, we yeah. have um, you know, musicians, poets, um, comedians, we have all of these people that are all promoting for a show that you are in. Mm-hmm. You know, and so to to have more more events like that, um, and then and then you have the, the organization, you know, Artists Underground or whatnot yeah. promoting you as well. So you have so many different people promoting you, you have so many markets that you would not have access to mm-hmm. beforehand. So um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, like having like many, uh, you know, re- increasing your your reach through your network. You know, that's mm-hmm. like another one of those things. You can meet one person who's connected to, you know, you know, five people, which could be extremely valuable. You know, but then mm-hmm. there's also being connected with an organization that has like several hundred or even a hundred under its mm-hmm. belt, or even more. Who knows? Um, yeah. So. Uh, let, just to talk specifically about the the artists that you have within Artists Underground, mm-hmm. what is you know what is one common quality that you see shared between some of the most talented people involved in Artists Underground? Um, I think it's community and a willingness or a, a wanting to do more, like a wanting to you know yeah. have have. Um, you know, it's not just being an artist and this is what I do. It's they want to entrench themselves in the life of the artist. Like that, I think, is it, it's everything to them. What What is the life of the artist exactly, you think? I think that, you know, because we, you know, a lot of us have day jobs, you know, and we want, yeah, <laughs> a yeah. lot of us have day jobs, yeah. you know, and we want to move out of having a day job. But to us, the more that we can be we can do things that make us feel like artists we feel like the day job it stops the day job stops being the thing that we do and then we do this art thing on the side oh yeah that's the deadly yeah exactly that's a deadly mentality oh yeah so so i think that that is what um with most people that associate with artists underground that's that's part of it. That's that's a huge part of it. It's it's that art is the thing I do, and then I have this nine to five day job on the side. You yeah. know, you have it's to. A, yeah, it, it's like a switch of mindset. You know. Yeah, and how 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 important do you find is mindset in the grand scheme of things? It's everything. Yeah. It's it's everything. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of asking rhetorical questions. Here. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean. Yeah. I mean, because I you know. Uh, I came from like I, there was a, a a little dark period of my life. It was very creative, but yeah. it was you know, and it was in the, the the film industry. You know, it was um, I, but because of who I was associated with, it the creativity kind of it it dropped out. We were creating, but we weren't getting anywhere. You know, it it, it was. And that was why I kind of burned out of that industry. It was it was and it was all who I associated with, you yeah. know. Um, my producing partner at the time, you know, uh, though he was very brilliant, he just developed a very, you know, a very dark mindset. And I kind of, you know, and and me being so connected with it, it people kind of started running, you know, creative people that I wanted to be associated with would would kind of go the other way. And it was like they were scared of. They sent some scary energy, or just yeah, uh, yeah. yeah they were running from a black hole, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, and so pulling out of that, you know, I've and and that's and that's why that's kind of why I started Artist Underground because I yeah. pulled out of that, and when I came out the other side, there was no one around, mm-hmm. you know, because 
Um, and so I, I, that was that was the whole thing. Is I was like, I have to rebuild, you know, what I had always intended on, you know, what I had always intended my life to be. I have to rebuild that from from this. So so mindset. I can speak from direct experience that you can produce as much as you can. And we worked our butts off. We we you know we were producing music videos, you know, short films, um, you know, writing and and. And, and all of that and we were producing all the time and we worked like crazy but we got nowhere and and you know and that was the big thing was why are we getting nowhere why are we getting nowhere and it was all the mindset you know yeah doesn't matter how talented you are if people don't want to be around you you're going nowhere you know we've seen many talented <laughs> people that you know that are you know, actors. There are some actors that are brilliantly talented, and people go, "Why is that person not working anymore?" Well, because they're horrible to work with. People don't want to work with them. It doesn't matter how talented you are. You mm -hmm. know, and that's and that's the real key that people need to realize is, you know, you have to be a good person. You have to be positive and upbeat. You have people have to like to be around you. Yeah. You have to give something because not just giving with your art, giving as a human being. You yeah. know. So talent isn't everything no basically you have yeah. to you have to develop it uh actually um that kind of leads into my next i got two just right just rapid fire questions like real mm -hmm. quick uh before we wrap up um you know like ta you know as far as like talent uh, you know what is your view on it is it so you know is it something you just have or something you develop you know how do you view how do you personally view talent and its importance in your yeah life? That's that's a hard <laughs> that's a hard question because there's talent and there's skill. Um, I don't know. I think that you come with something. You come with the way that your mind works. You know, um, and you just hear certain things. Like for example, I I don't hear music the way that you know musicians hear music. I hear lyrics. You know, and when I listen to music, you know, and I hear the story, that's what really inspires me. And I don't hear the individual notes. You know, some people can hear the individual notes, you know, um, I, I have the feelings, but it's, I feel that talent is partly how your mind views things and that you're able to, you know, I, I hear, I hear, um, poetry, you know, I hear when I'm, when I'm thinking of my poetry, I can hear the way the words sound before they come out. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of finding words to fit the structure of the, kind of the melody of the poem. So I hear those types of, you know, th those types of things that that's the way that my mind works, yeah. you know? Um, and I feel like, you know, and some people they see geometry is, you know, is very important. I know a cinematographer who could see the lines in light, yeah. you know? And so I think talent is partly has to do with the way that your mind works. And then it, at another part is hard work, mm -hmm. you know, because you can have latent talent. <coughs> And you have to you have to work to develop that, and that gets into skill and craft. Yeah, you know. So, so yeah, that, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, it's just hard for me because I think that you know you can learn it, but it's it's something that you have to discover what your mind is is built for, yeah. and like you have then an own it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you have an inclination. Like I'm inclined towards certain activities than others, and. And actually, the biggest thing that I that got me on that path is I re I read a book called Mastery by Robert Greene, mm -hmm. and that is like my go-to book right now. And that's one thing he talks about is, you know, like you're following your inclinations. I think once you do that, then the talent just kind of that's latent gets unlocked, and you know, yeah. just kind of moves forward. But yeah, uh, that's important. So uh, let's gonna let's ask a fun question. I asked Jason the same question. Uh -huh. uh, if you, what's your favorite album, and uh, how would your life be different if it didn't exist? Oh, um, <laughs> my my favorite album. I mean, and I don't know if this is gonna sound bad or what. Um, don't Third worry Eye about Blind. It. Third what? Eye Blind. It's not bad. Like, Why? Well, I don't know because people, you know, like classic whatever, you know, uh, but. Yeah. Okay. Although Third, you didn't say an album from the '60s, yeah, shame oh, on you. Really, I've yeah. been listening to Billy Joel is huge for me right now, like for the past couple of years. But um, and yeah. I like jazz a lot. I've been really into jazz. But which Third Eye Blind, uh, Blind album? The first one, the original. Um, you know, Semi Charmed Life and 
and Jumper and all of that yeah. God of Wine. Um, that was... I listened to that album over and over and over again. And I even went through and I read, you know, I read cover to cover, you know, and I'm kind of uh, a little s new nerd student and I looked up all the words I didn't understand. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I went through, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, it was the, the words, it was the lyrics to me, yeah. you know, and um, I don't know, just time in my life. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I went to every Third Eye Blind concert I could, I could find and find a ride for. And uh, and I think that that really the the poetry of it really inspired me in the way that you know the words the words went together and some of the you know some of the rhyming and and things like that you know in my young mind it was very you know inspirational to me. All so, right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on. Like, it, you know, we've learned a lot of like great stuff now, and mostly, you know, just about like creativity, how to you know unlock it embracing the struggle the power of like crossing over like different disciplines of art to expand yourself and learn and marketing so yeah yeah chelsea thanks again uh real quick uh, tell us how uh people can connect uh with artists underground if they're in the los angeles area what's the best mm -hmm. way to do that the best way is um on our facebook page it's uh you know uh facebook uh forward slash facebook.com forward slash artist underground okay um that's where a lot of people you know post and share things um that's where you know if you can connect up with us there you know when we have events um if we have been having you know once every six months we've we've put on an event you know yeah. um we'd like to do it more but right now you know we all have day jobs and things like that so yeah. Um, and then, and then plans are to, you know, so if you want to connect up with us there, you know, and, and join the group, then you can get kind of updates on what's happening there. And then, um, hopefully in the near future, we will be doing a, um, uh, a show on radio soapbox, um, probably within oh, the next nice. couple months. So, and that'll be, you know, a short show, uh, mostly in line with, you know, the business of art. Okay. You know, uh, the business and promotion aspects of art, but also, you know, um, discipline and, and um, okay. developing your craft and things like that. So okay. that's in the near future. But um, just go to the – and then you can go to artistsunderground.com, which is artists-underground.com. Uh, okay. Um, the website isn't fully fleshed out, but you can, okay. you know, you can go there as well. And we'll provide all these links below the video, guys, so, you know, you don't have to – Pop, you know, hit rewind on the video. Just check out the links below and, uh, and click on them and get connected with Artists Underground. Thanks again, mm -hmm. Chelsea, for uh, yeah. coming out. Like, it's been Thank a you. pleasure. Thank you for having me on. All right. All right. Okay, guys, that wraps up another episode of Seeds of Music with Chelsea Cohen from Artists Underground. Uh, make sure to check out uh, Artists Underground if you are in the Los Angeles area. You can get involved with that. If not, you know, uh, head over to the website and uh, stay up to date with what they're doing because uh, there's a lot of great things you can learn uh, just from the content they put out on that site. Uh, also, really important, if you haven't yet, sign up for the Seeds of Music email and newsletter. Why? Because this is the best, most effective, and critical way for me to keep in touch with you and keep you updated so that you don't miss any awesome little thing that ever comes out of Seeds of Music. If you're watching from YouTube, uh, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But most importantly, head over to seedsofmusic.net and sign up to the email newsletter using any of the forms on the site. Uh, lastly, uh, like and share this video with all of your friends. Like, If you found something helpful in this video, then why not share it with someone else that you think might benefit from it as well? And last but not least, join in on the conversation. Comment on this video. What was your greatest takeaway from the interview? And, you know, tell me how will you apply what you've learned? Because, you know, nothing happens unless you take action. So if you're sitting on your butt and just listening and saying, yeah, yeah, I get it, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, that's really great you know, information there. But you don't do anything about it. That's not going to get you anywhere. So, you know, uh, give yourself some accountability and let me know, like, how you're going to apply what you've learned from this in the future. And if there's someone that you think would like to be interviewed, maybe that person is you, then send me an email. 
get in touch with me. It's totally cool. I am all about that. I'm actually getting uh, em- emails from people that want to be interviewed on the show, and I answer back every single one because that's extremely important to me. And promoting awesome music is what this site is all about and helping people out while doing that. See you in the next interview.